and thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee wheresoever thou goest. Wouldn't it be awesome if the Lord said that to you? He just did. <laughs> you know, Joshua didn't have the old King James version here that he could turn to. He had to remember what the Lord said to him. But it's written down, if it applied to him, it applies to us. Stretch your hand this way and ask the Lord to anoint me and to anoint you as his words anointed. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, Lord, I surrender these lips. Lord, I surrender my spirit, Lord. Use me today, Lord, for your glory. Let your glory move in this house today, Lord God. I pray, Father, that walls come down in this house today in the name of Jesus. And the church says, <clears throat> amen. So we pick up here in, in, in this, uh, in Joshua, and, and, and it's, well, that's kind of what Pam was making your, the decoration there. You, you know, she's being strong in the Lord and, and the power of his might. And, and, and she's mentioning that there's, how many know that there's more of this for you than there is against you? I, I, I don't know what it'd been like, Gene, when the, when, when the, the prophet's servants are with him, they're looking out there and they got a multitude they can't even number. And the old man says, uh, oh, they'd be more with us than they are with them. He'd be saying, let's see, one, two. What did you say? They'd be more with us than they are with them. And then he opened his eyes and he saw the host. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. God opened their eyes that we can see the host. Yes. That count. And by the way, one angel can go out and slew 186,000 in one night by himself. And we got a host of those in camp around about us. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Hallelujah. You know, if we just act like we believe this Bible is true, well, will you act like or not? It's true. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, so anyway, Joshua's receiving that calling, and, and we, you know, Joshua's just the same as Caleb. He wholly followed the Lord. And, but but they, they had some obstacles in, in front of them. And, uh, you know, Joshua was, again, at the end of that verse, I want to mention verse 17 at the end of that chapter. said, according as we hearken unto Moses in all things, the people are making this decoration, so we will hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. We're going to follow you just like we did Moses as long as the Lord was with you just like he was with Moses. And said, Where, whosoever it is that doth not doth rebel against thy commandments, we will not hearken unto the, and not hearken unto thy words in all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Lord mercy. But again, it's the only. God is saying only be strong and courageous. His people are saying only be strong and courageous. How many, how many would want the people that lead you to be strong and courageous? I, 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 don't, I don't want to follow after somebody that's going to do it. How many know logic in the kingdom has nothing to do with each other? Amen. If you can reason it out in your mind and think it makes good sense, it probably wasn't from God. But if he tells you something that makes absolutely no sense, it's probably God all the way. Well, hallelujah. Uh, <clears throat> but anyways, uh, let, let's, let's try to move over. I'm, on, I'm trying to get to chapter 6, but, but we've got some other things we've got to cover in the meantime. Uh, I, I want to go to chapter 2, uh, verse 24. So they said to Joshua, Truly the Lord has delivered into our hands all the land, for even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. That's after the spies have been sent out. And they go in there. Now, they might have been some doubting over here in God's camp, but they wasn't nobody doubting over there in the enemy's camp because in the enemy's camp, they knew the hand of the Lord was on them. God help us to get to the place where we at least can be as faithful and understanding what God's doing as the enemy does. 
But anyway, they come back and gave him that, that, that report. And, and this is, and they, they was facing some obstacles. You know, I'm glad we don't do that anymore, that we don't have any obstacles, everything just smooths. Oh, some of y'all got some obstacles? <laughs> well, let's look what happens when, when they did that. Joshua rose early, verse chapter three and verse one. Joshua rose early in the morning and removed from Shittim and, and came to Jordan and he and all the children of Israel lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days. I want to tell you something. Most of us, if we don't get something in three seconds or if we're really stretched out, we'll go three minutes. But don't you ask me to wait no three hours after three days that they were there. It said, uh, it came to pass after three days that the officer went through the host and he commanded the people saying, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests and Levites bearing it, you shall remove from your place and go after it. What would that represent? That represented the presence of the Lord. I'm glad we don't carry no wooden box around with us anymore. The presence of the Lord is not out there in the box. The presence of the Lord is right here. Amen. Well, anyways, in verse five, it says, and Joshua said unto the priest, sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Last week, that's kind of what I was preaching. Half in, half out, won't get it done. You gotta sanctify yourself. You, you can be half in, something goes wrong, you fall out. When you're all the way in, you may fall, but you're still in, praise the Lord. Well, half in, half out, won't get it done. But, but you know, when they, uh, when they stepped into the, let's come on down to verse 15, said it came to pass as soon as the souls of the feet of the priest that bear the ark. Why was the ark important? It was the presence of the Lord. Hey, and and, and there was, it was flood time, it wasn't, going out here to tell the cold lake where everything is smooth. I, I used to barefoot a little bit. And it was really exciting when you could see the water that were just crystal flat smooth. Cause you, you can barefoot that water. But well, when it's choppy, it's a little bit different. They wasn't there on smooth. It was flood time and, and here they come up there. And, but as soon as the soles of their feet touch, let me, let me go back and pick that up again. Verse 13. And it come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priest that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters and, and they shall come down from above and they shall stand up as a heap. And it came to pass when the people removed from their tents. Well, anyways, verse 17, and the priest that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground. Now they'd had one of them dry ground experiences before already. They come out there and, and Pharaoh chased them down to the Red Sea. The rod went stretched out, the waters parted. They went across on dry ground. Pharaoh thought that was a cool thing to do so he went right in after them and the water didn't stay dry for Pharaoh when they released that rod back. But, but so it, it probably wouldn't have fascinated them as much as it would fascinate you and I that you're seeing it for the second time. This, this ain't the first time they've saw this. But he said, uh, the, and the priests that bear the ark of the Lord stood on, on firm dry ground in the midst of the Jordan and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. So they're starting in to the possession Oh yeah, let me mention this. They'd been on this journey for 40 years. Three days probably didn't seem like a big deal. Somebody had been waiting 40 years. But, but they're about ready to go in. I'm gonna skip chapter four because I'm trying to get chapter six. Uh, let's, let's pick up verse one of chapter five. It came to pass when the kings of the Amorites and all were on the side of Jordan westward and all the kings of the Canaanites which were on the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until they passed over, that their, now who was these people? They was enemies of God. They was enemies of the Israelites. They had the possession Israel was coming to get. And, and so here they are, said that their hearts melted, neither was any spirit in them anymore because the children of Israel. At that time, now, so it should have been time you're thinking, let's shout and let's have a party. When you think you should shout and have a party, look what the Lord said. Uh, and at that time, 
The Lord said to Joshua, make these sharp knives and circumcise the children of Israel the second time. It wasn't the second time for a lot of them because that wandering, they had got away from the covenant. Circumcision represent covenant. And for what God was about to do, he was doing this for his covenant people. So it's, and Joshua was obedient to do that. But then after all that had happened, and, and they, they uh, verse 11 said they did eat the old corn, and on the morrow after the Passover, unleavened cakes and parched corn, and, and the manna ceased. They were in that place where, where it was promised. And on the morrow after they had eaten the old corn, neither had the children of Israel manna anymore, but they did eat the fruit of the land of Canaan. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man against him with a sword drawn in his, sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said, Art thou for us or an adversary? And he said, Nay, but as the captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell upon his face and did worship and said unto him, what saith my Lord unto his servant? Now Joshua was a mighty man. He just got all this, but he wasn't, what Daniel's trying to say, he wasn't too proud. He wasn't too exalted. He couldn't fall on his face in worship. Well, I pray the Lord knock some starch out of us someday and, 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 and let us get to the place where we don't think we're too big and too wonderful to worship the Lord. Joshua was the number one man in the land at this certain time, but when he came in the presence of the Lord, he found it in his heart to worship. And the captain of the Lord's host said to Joshua, Loose thy shoes off thy feet, for the place wherein thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. That's quite a little event, you know, that, that's taken place so far. But he's there facing an angel, the presence of the Lord, or maybe God himself. Or, but anyways, this is what we pick up in chapter 6. Now Jericho was straightly shut up. Why was it shut up? Because their heart was melting. They heard this group is coming. They said that in the New Testament. Those that turn the world upside down is coming hither also. Pray God that'll happen someday in, in, in our land. Those folks over there that believe God that signs and wonders and miracles happening and all the good things, the words coming through in their life, they're coming our way. Well, they, they, they was fear in their land. The, the city was shut up. And by the way, that city was, you know, archaeologists have since, you know, dug us up and, and there was a, an outer wall that was 10 feet thick, an inner wall that was 20 feet thick. So there was a 30 foot thick wall. And I, I, I wish I could, uh, I should have measured this out, but, and they say the walls were about 30 feet high, so that'd probably be close. What do you think? Wouldn't that be pretty close to that ceiling right there? would be about that. Probably 10 feet down there. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe even a little more than that. About the, the roof line on a two story house. Is, and that's how high them walls was. Now, they didn't, have, they didn't have all this modern machinery did, so you're looking at this city and, and it's shut up. Look, the gates is closed. And by the way, they knew this coming, so they got provision. They, it wasn't going to be no easy thing to just starve them out. So this, this was, said none went in and none went out. Before I go any further than that right there, I want to tell you there's some walls. And, and, and walls work two ways. It kept the folks inside, inside, and it kept the folks outside, outside. And, and, and I, I know that the goal here was to get inside, to get what was inside was, was what's going on. But it's the same way. We got walls that get up in our way, and that's, again, what Pam, what, what Faye's talking about, those walls that stop us from getting to where the Lord wants us to be. And, and, you know, some of them, we could just name one after another, but a, a lot of times it's just fear. A wall of fear will keep you from possessing what you need to possess. Sometimes it's, it's health. We've got to struggle with our health, and it's a wall that's up there, and, and you keep getting these crazy reports that says stage four. You know what stage four means to God? Nothing. It's just a name. When, when, I, talk, when I prayed to my little sister Mary this morning, she got and, and, and she's... They've been treating her for gout because her foot's swollen and one leg's about two inches bigger than the other, I think she said. 
and, and, and it's all swollen and it's discolored and all this stuff. So they're going over there and, and, and it may be a blood clot. I said, it doesn't matter. It don't matter if it's gout or if it's blood clot. Both of them are just names. Everything's got a name. Has to bow at the name of Jesus. So, so, but it's a wall. Nonetheless, that's easy for me to say it's not my leg. But it's, it's not quite so easy for her to face that sort of a wall. And, and, and then in so many other cases, marriages. You know, marriage, you, you know, everybody's saying, well, you know, when I get married, everything's going to be wonderful. <laughs> no, it ain't. There are going to be some difficulties that come along with that. Anita just broke his two of his ribs up here. Uh, there, there are going to be some difficulties that come along with that. But if it's, if it's God's plan in his land, there's going to be blessings that come because of it. If you treat your wife like the Lord treats the church and if you treat him the way the Lord calls you, you know, but, but there'll be some walls that have to be pulled down. Well, what about addictions? You, you know, in, in the church, now they, we don't talk about it. As long as you get a script written for it, we don't call it Drugs. It don't matter if you got a script for it or you don't have it. Or most folks are probably suffering from drug addiction in America. It started if somebody writing them a scripture. Hey, you know, Bobby, Bobby Small, my cousin, was one of the best baritone singers I ever knew. He led the choir down to that big church where the big cross is. A man of God and loved the Lord. And he started having some anxiety problems and so they started giving Valiums. Doctor prescribed Valiums. He wound up losing his job after a period of time. Then you can't afford volume, so he winds up. He would drink rubbing alcohol, he, you know. But it started with somebody writing a script. That's just a wall, and the walls are going to fall today. Well, what about, I, I, get, I get tired of sending these people to all this jumping and joy. By the way, Sunday night, I didn't know I could jump so much anymore. I, I enjoyed Sunday night service more than I have a, in, in any service in forever because to see those young people lined up, probably 10, 15 of them right there just jumping and worshiping God, not because they were singing, because somebody else was singing. They was worshiping God. You, you know, I think it'd be good. I, I bet you I'm healthier today than I was last Sunday. Well, praise the Lord. I, I, didn't, I didn't really mean physically I was going to bet on that. I, I didn't mean that kind of bet you. So, okay, so, so here's what happened when, you, when the walls, when you come up against the wall. And the Lord said unto Joshua, what Faye was saying, what Pam was saying, what Danielle's saying, when you get a word from God, it don't matter what the obstacle looks like. It don't matter what the odds are. And, 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 and then he, he said this one little word right here, see. See, I have given. Stop right there. Let's see. Yeah, I see. I, 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 I'm, I'm wearing glasses, so I, for a long, long time, I, I had incredible eyesight. One time I went for my DOT physical and said, you should be a helicopter pilot with all that well, but I, I can see better without these when I'm looking out there. I still see way out there. So if I'd been looking at that wall 30 feet high as this ceiling, I, didn't, I don't know if they knew it was 30 feet thick. So I would have said, yes, I see. I have given. The Lord is saying it in the tense that he meant it. He didn't make no mistake in what he's saying. In God's mind, it was already done. Amen. It don't matter if that report says stage four, diabetes, heart problems. It don't matter what it says. The Lord says, by my stripes, you're healed. It doesn't matter what the bank account says. If you're a tither, the Lord said, according to his riches and glory, he'll supply all of your needs. And he says that while we're on this side, everybody can shout on the other side. I have given thee. I have given thee. Unto thy hand, Jericho, and the king thereof, 
and the mighty men of valor. The king, the city, and all their mighty men. God's a given, and you're still looking at a 30-foot tall, tall wall. But God tells him how to do it. Okay, you're going to... Yeah, I thought about that Sunday school story about that little boy, what he, what he learned in, in Sunday school where he said that Israel got chased down to the Red Sea and, and, and you know, it was a family visit and the first time in Sunday school and the kid went to Sunday school and dad was real curious about what the kid had learned. So what did you learn in Sunday school? He said, well, there was this guy named Moses, a good guy. He was being chased by this guy named Pharaoh, a bad guy. And all his armies, and they chased him down to the Red Sea. It was a mountain on one side and a mountain on the other side, and, and nobody knew what to do. But then, then Moses picked up his cell phone, and he called the Israeli Air Force. And they began to bomb and, and, and drop bombs into that place. And, 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 and then, then the reconnaissance group built a bridge over, and they went across on the other side. They said, did they teach you that in Sunday school? He said, no, but if you have a hard time believing that, you're going to really have a hard time believing what they said. <laughs> <laughs> but this is God's plan. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, now, now Joshua was a he, he was a military man. You know, he he'd been out there fighting, and, and he fought till when 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 Moses' hands was up, he won. When Moses' hand went down, he would begin to lose. So, so he understood something about fighting battles. He said, "Said you shall come past the city, all ye men of war, and go around about the city once, and thus thou do six days." And seven priests shall bear before thee the ark, seven trumpets of ram's horn, and seventh day thou shalt pass the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with the trumpets. It shall come to pass when I make a long blast with the ram's horn. I wish Carolyn had been here with the ram's horn today. And, and when thou hear the sound of the trumpet, and all the people shout with a great shout, that the walls of the city shall flat down, shall fall flat down, and the people shall ascend every man straight for him. It's not enough that the, Kevin, if a wall is 30 feet tall and 30 feet thick, if it falls over, how high is it looking at you still? 30 feet. So evidently the earth is going to open up enough for that thing to sit down because they're going to go straight ahead. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I, you know, said, and Joshua, the son of Nun, the priest, verse six, take up the ark of the covenant and let the seven priests bear seven trumpets at ram horn before the ark of the Lord. And, and well, anyways, they, they did what he told them to do. They told him, well, I'm, verse 10, and Joshua commanded the people saying, you shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice. The church is going to keep their mouth shut for six days. We could do that here. Y'all do it almost every Sunday when I preach. Amen. You shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout. Then shall you shout. So the ark of the Lord come past the city round about it once. Now I always picture this as some big huge, it, it, this, I thought it was a big deal to go around that city. It, it probably didn't take them more than an hour to come past that city because only on the last day they did it seven times. So let's say if it's two hours, it had been a 14 hour day. I, I, I went with Jeremy and, and, and Danielle and, and they, we went to Opryland Hotel. I've never been in a building as big as Opryland Hotel. I, I, and and, and you, you do pretty good to compass about it in, in, in an hour. But this city, they was going around the outside of this wall and you know that they had their men of war up on top. They, they was there and look at this army going down through there and everybody's keeping their mouth shut. But, but I, I want to point out to you that ram's horn was sounded. Though, their heart was already melting inside those people, but imagine what it was when this group just marching around and they blowing. But this is what I want you to see. At the end of that first day, 
The walls hadn't even cracked. But evidently, Lois, they laid down in peace because they had a word from God. Yes. Yeah. So day two, if I had about a week, I'd, I'd, I'd walk this around. It, 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 day two, they walked around, horns blowing, their mouth shut, and they had peace. Right. Day three, they walked around, horns blowing. When it comes to day seven, that time, and I wonder, I, 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 before I tell you what happened, I wonder if the Lord had told you that if you'll just shout, all I need from you is a shout. The walls are 30 feet high. They're 30 feet thick. I'm taking care of this. All I need from you is a shout. You know, I'm not sure the walls would have fallen in this day. Preacher, you have to be so mean. No, I just do it because I like it. <laughs> Verse 20. Well, before, the, before they did that, he gave them some further in, instruction. Verse 17. He says, The city shall be accursed, even it and all that's therein to the Lord. Also Rahab the harlot shall live. Why is she living? Because she was kind. Yes. And, and, and she took care of them. They were taking care of her. <clears throat> and all that are with her in her house because she hid the messengers that we sent. Yes. I heard Tim about preach on this one time. He preached on the wall that couldn't fall. She lived on that wall. So evidently, maybe, 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 I mean, the Lord protected that one little section. I, I don't know, but I, Shambach says the wall that couldn't fall because she had a word. Said, but the silver and gold and the vessels of brass and iron are concentrated unto the, the Lord, and they shall come into the treasure of the Lord. And here we go. So the people shouted when the police priest blew the trumpets. So the people shouted. So the people shouted. So the people shouted. Glory to God. If, if all those walls that, that we were facing right there, if it's sickness, if it's a marriage problem, it's a financial problem, whatever it is, if it's lack of joy, if it's lack of peace, Whatever it is, the Lord asked us to do one thing. That's all he asked them to do. And I think maybe it just carried right over well if we can just do the same. So the people shouted. Hallelujah. Well, now all of a sudden after six days with nothing happening, that uh, and a great shout and the walls fell flat and the people went in the city, every man straight before him and they took the city. You know, there's a lot of scripture you could go to and, and, and uh, you know, one that said, Jeremy, if you, uh, Jeremy's on the camera, that, ne never mind, I'll, I'll just, uh, Proverbs chapter three. Proverbs three, verse five. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not thy own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. That's what Joshua had to do. When he's looking at Anita, I mean, if he had any military experience, he'd say, what? But he didn't do that. He did what the Lord told him, and victory became because of it. It's not Jericho's walls that was keeping us out. You and I, how the wall that fell in Matthew. You, you know, when, when the, the Lord gave up the ghost, the veil that was separating us was split from the top to the bottom, signifying that we can go right in to the presence of the Most High. When Jesus said it's finished, that means that sickness can't no longer hold us. That means that, means that poverty can no longer hold, hold us. That meant that everything we needed was, had been provided and all we got to do if we could just learn to shout. Yeah. Amen. 
Thank you, Lord. Well, one more scripture in closing. That's first in closing right there, isn't it? Uh, Isaiah. Chapter 30. See, Jeremy believes me. <clears throat> Verse 18. Don't talk about God waiting in a lot of places. Look at this verse right here. If you don't have a Bible, read, look at it when you get home. Therefore, will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore he will be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are they that wait for him. The Lord has been waiting for some of us to view that the wall, our, there is no wall that's holding it. That, the only wall that kept us out was that wall. I'm glad I don't have to go to Father so-and-so and ask him, is, would he talk to the Lord on my behalf? I'm glad I can step right up and say, Daddy, it's me again, Lord. You, you, you know, and, and, but you bring your petitions and, and then may we learn something from the fact that if it didn't happen when you prayed the first time, lay down in peace. When the enemy steals your peace, you, you, you know, what the Shambach says, no, not what Jerry Savelle said, that if he can't get your peace, he can't keep your goods. Right. 